covenant people will help you enter into your destiny and fulfill your purpose. You know, there are certain parts of our purpose that can only be fulfilled by us. There's other parts of our purpose that are going to be fulfilled um, through our relationships with others and in these committed relationships, covenant relationships with others. Hi friends, blessings in the name of the Lord. I have something to share with you today. I pray that this blesses you in the name of Jesus. So some of you are going to be having some covenant relationships coming into your life. And we're going to be talking about connecting with our covenant people and also recognizing those counterfeits because, you know, sometimes before a covenant relationship comes, the enemy tries to sneak some counterfeits in there. So we're going to talk about that as well. I pray that this blesses you today and um, look forward to speaking with you. So the Lord had me in the book of Ruth. And, you know, the book of Ruth is all about covenant. It is all about covenant relationships. It is all about those committed relationships. Um, we often hear when we're talking about Ruth and Boaz, we hear it preached a lot about how Ruth is out working the fields, right? Like we hear this story a lot. Um, be out working your field because that's when she gets noticed by Boaz and everything like that. But, um... The truth of what it says about what Boaz truly recognizes in Ruth is that he recognizes that she's a covenant woman, a woman of commitment, a woman who honors her commitments because it says this. Um, we're looking in Ruth chapter 2, um, verse 10. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, this is Ruth talking to Boaz, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. So, um, what we see here, you know, it, it is acknowledged that Ruth is working hard, um, no doubt. But what we see here is Boaz is honoring that Ruth is a woman who is a woman who honors her commitments, who is a woman of covenant. By her actions, Ruth is staying committed and in covenant relationship and honoring her relationship with both her mother-in-law and with her husband who has passed away. Um, because Naomi, her mother-in-law, is not able to have any more children. And because back then with the Israelites, it was all about um, passing the family name down because land was passed down by family, by tribe. It was divided up that way. And so you had to have someone to pass your your family name down to and to inherit to the land to continue um, your legacy being passed down. That was super important to the Israelites. And Naomi had lost both her sons and her husband and she there was no way she was going to have more children at her age so she she was going to um her her husband's name would not have been passed down and she would have lost that land because women could not own land and she wouldn't have anyone that she could pass it down to and so um in ruth agreeing to stay with her mother-in-law she was honoring both her her husband who had died and her mo her mother-in-law I met someone whose spouse had passed away 10 years earlier, and this was a man who was still taking care of his mother-in-law um, who had, you know, severe um, dementia and could not care for herself. And before his spouse passed away, his spouse had made him promise that he would never take his mother-in-law to a nursing home and he had honored this commitment this was 10 years later um he was caring for her at home um despite the you know difficulties of doing that and you just don't see men caring for um loved ones like that at home a lot um but it really spoke to how much he honored his relationship with his spouse that he kept that commitment even when it was hard 
And this, this is what we see about Ruth is that she's someone who honors her commitments even when it's hard. And the other important thing to know here about covenant and covenant relationships is that it, you know, covenant is based off of this. Your God is my God, so your people will be my people. Because this is what Ruth says um, to Naomi. This is Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. Do not urge me to leave you or to turn from following you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be be there I will be buried. So covenant is based off this. Your God is my God. Therefore, you are my people. And that's what covenant relationships are all about. There are those people that we we have a special relationship, a special connection with, off, oftentimes a lifelong connection because we have the same God. Your people are my people because your God is my God. And the thing about covenant relationship too is that your covenant people will be primed to accept you because Ruth Boaz was Rahab's son. So Rahab the prostitute who was a Canaanite woman um, who lived in Jericho and who saved the spies, her and her household became lived with the Israelites. So they became part of the Israelites. Um, she left everything that she knew and her entire world behind. And because she believed in the Lord, um, she said she believed that the Lord had delivered Jericho into the hands of the Israelites and that the Lord was the God of heaven and earth. That is why she helped the Israelites spies. And she became, you know, her, their God became her God. Their people became her people. And so we see how this started with Rahab. This, and then we see with Boaz, he is in a position where he is ready to accept Ruth, even though she is a, Ruth is a Moabite woman. She is not an Israelite. And both the Canaanites and the Moabites were enemies of Israel. So Boaz was ready to accept this Moabite woman who many would have considered um, an enemy of Israel. Um, the Moabite women had caused problems for Israel in the past um, and had led the Israelite men astray in the past and to follow other gods. And um, they were considered enemies of Israel. And so um, we see here where, where Boaz is ready to accept Ruth, even though she's a foreigner, because his mother was a foreigner. His mother was also previously had been a prostitute. Who knows what it was like for Boaz growing up and the kinds of things he would have heard about, you know, people would have said about, you know, his, his mom and making your mama jokes. It would have been probably really nasty at times, but that also primed him to be ready to accept Ruth, even though she was a foreigner, um, because there are many people who probably would not have done that. Um, and so that's something important to know too, is that for your covenant relationships, those people will be primed in advance. And I don't know your situation. You may have, you may be coming out of prison and you may have been in prison the last 20 years and thinking, who's going to accept me? Like who's going to accept me as a ministry partner? Who's going to accept me into a covenant relationship and trust me, um, after my past or whatever your past may be, you may be thinking, who's going to accept me into a covenant relationship because of my past. But the people who you are meant to be in covenant relationship with, um, are going to be primed to be ready to accept you like their 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 experiences their past whatever they're going to be prepared by the lord and ready to accept you when they meet you and vice versa okay so what you know without rahab there wouldn't have been ruth and boaz and naomi um and so Again, Ruth was a Moabite woman, but she honored her covenant and commitment to her Israelite husband and to her mother-in-law. And, 
you, something else to know about covenant people, covenant people are lifers. Like oftentimes they stay with us for life. It's a level of commitment you don't see in everyday relationship. And because of the power of that, then the enemy often will try to send people into a believer's life who are going to um, seem like they are your covenant people at first, but who are actually going to be just sent by the enemy to try to lead you astray. Um, because this was a tactic that was used. Um, it talks about in Numbers 31, Numbers 25, where Moab seduces Israel and where um, Balaam had tried to, Balaam was hired to curse Israel, but he couldn't because the Lord would not curse them. And so Balaam had actually um, counseled um, Israelites enemies to be unfaithful to the Lord and to by um, encouraging them to use the women to seduce the Israelite men um, so the women of Moab the Moabite women again um, Ruth was a Moabite woman but the Moabite women had enticed the Israelite men into sexual immorality and into following after their God um, and Balaam had actually encouraged this. So this is important to know. Balaam had not been able to curse the Israelites directly. And so what he did is he encouraged the Moabite women to entice the Israelite men into relationship. And through that relationship that led them to idolatry and it, it caused all sorts of problems for them. And so that's what the enemy will try to do if he cannot um, get you to engage in sin directly or to um, disobey the Lord directly. Um, if he cannot curse you directly, and he, and he can't, the enemy can't curse you if you are in the Lord. Um, but if he can't curse you directly, then he may try to entice you in a wrong relationship and through that relationship get you to fall. Um, so that's what we saw in numbers. Um, and that's why it's so important because the enemy may try to send people and entice us into wrong relationship to get us to go the wrong direction or to be deceived. And oftentimes these people, something important to know about it is that the counterfeit relationship will look will look just like the covenant relationship at first. So there may be signs, wonders, confirmation. You may, have, you may have dreams confirming that this is the right relationship for you. Um, so all those same things can be there because remember that the Egyptian magicians were able to make a snake appear just like Moses could with his staff. Moses turned his staff into a snake. The Egyptian magicians could do the same thing and they could replicate that and replicate those signs. So the enemy can replicate signs, confirmations, um, dreams, different um, confirming signs or what seem like wonders or we may think is a confirmation from God is the enemy replicating those things to try to present the counterfeit like it's the real thing and the person that we're meant to be in covenant with um, so that once we agree once we agree to the thing then the enemy is going to use that to try to derail us get off get us off track um, lead us the wrong way and ultimately in an an attempt to destroy us. But um, the important thing to know is that along with those signs, so don't ever just rely like on a dream, for example, to tell you if this person is for you or not. Um, along with those signs, um, if it's a counterfeit, there's also, there's going to be other things that come with it. Like you're gonna have doubts, you're gonna have confusion, uncertainty, um, there's going to be things that just don't seem to line up. You may you may have question, see things that make you question this person's character, um, or it just seems like things don't line up exactly as they're supposed to be, and like it seems right, but you're not sure. There's going to be a lot of doubt. There's going to be checks in your spirit. So God will allow those checks in your spirit. So um, pay attention if you see that because you don't want to commit yourself to the wrong thing. Um, so that's why it's so important that we use discernment. Um, and that we're careful about um, what we agree to and who we're committing to 
um, in covenant type relationships. You know, um, as people of God, we are held to our word and to our vows and to our commitments. Like that's taken very seriously. God takes that very seriously because God is a God of his word. God keeps his promises. God honors his commitments. And so he expects us as his children to do the same thing. And so we want to be really careful because in the world, like the world will just make promises and commitments and vows with their mouth and just not take it seriously and think I can say this, but later just say, well, oh, well, I didn't really mean it um, and renege on it and go back on those promises and say, well, oh, well, I didn't realize this or I didn't know the circumstances when I agreed to it. But actually in the Lord, like we're, we're held to a higher standard. And when we make vows and we when we sign things when we agree to those things we are held to those commitments even if the other person um doesn't keep keep their side of the bargain or even if we are deceived we see this in um joshua 9 where it's talking about the gibeonites the gibeonites actually deceived the israelites by pretending to be from a far off land they carried old food they wore old shoes and they made it look like they came from far away from a distant country. It said, we have come from a distant country, make a treaty with us. So they were trying to get the Israelites to make a treaty and an agreement with them. Um, and it says that, you know, they kind of showed all their stuff showing that they had come from far away. Um, and it, and it says, um, in verse nine, they answered, your servants have come from a distant country because of the fame of the Lord, your God for we have heard reports of him. And then it says in verse 14, the Israelites sampled their provisions, but did not inquire of the Lord. Uh-oh. So the Israelites were like testing out the things that they were being shown by the Gibeonites. Like, yeah, these clothes are old. Yeah, these shoes have, you know, holes in them. Yeah, this bread is moldy, so they must have come from far away, but they did not inquire of the Lord. And that's that's the crucial piece right there. It's, it's crucial that we're just not looking at the, the signs or the evidence in front of us, but that we're inquiring of the Lord. Because it says, Then Joshua made a treaty of peace with them to let them live, and the leaders of the assembly ratified it by oath. Okay, so later... Three days later, they, after making this treaty with the Gibeonites, they find out that the Gibeonites were actually their neighbors and lived near them. And so they were supposed to destroy them, right? But they had already made this agreement. And, and could they just go back on their agreement and say, well, you deceived us. Now we're going to break our agreement with you. No, they had already swore an oath. It says in verse 18, but the Israelites did not attack them because the leaders of the assembly had sworn an oath to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. So, you know, um, this is just an example of how when we are like giving our oath to something, um, how, you know, that there's power in that and we're expected to honor our oaths um and we can't just go back and later and say like well, well we didn't know or we were deceived um because there can be spiritual consequences to that if we are like giving our word agreeing to something <laughs> signing agreements whatever it may be um making vows you know anything where we are making that type of agreement um, it can have spiritual consequences if we later try to break it. Um, you know, when we have when we have already given our word to something, and that's why it's so important that we're careful what we are giving our word to. Because um, if something is a is um, if we give our commitment to something that is not of the Lord that we didn't inquire of the Lord about, then we can birth an Ishmael, right? So the promise, so covenant, the right covenant relationships are going to birth promise in our life. They're going to birth promise in our life, but the wrong covenant relationships, they're just going to birth problems in our life. They're going to cause problems for us. And so, um, you know, we want to have discernment and be able to distinguish what's of God and what's a, what's not. Um, and be careful not to just quickly promise something or agree to something without seeking the Lord or enter into a relationship, um, a committed relationship without seeking the Lord about it. 
Um, on the other hand, we don't, we don't want to hold back from something that is truly of God because this could be the thing about covenant relationships is that your covenant people will help you enter into your destiny and fulfill your purpose. You know, there are certain parts of our purpose that can only be fulfilled by us. There's other parts of our purpose that are going to be fulfilled um, through our relationships with others and in these committed relationships, covenant relationships with others. So we have parts of our, our destiny and our purpose that are are not for us to fulfill alone, but that are to be fulfilled in connection with the right relationships and the God-ordained relationships. So they can, um, they covenant relationships, um, God-ordained relationships are gonna be mutually beneficial. Um, we, there's so many examples of this. Rahab helped the spies. She saved their life. The spies saved her life. So covenant relationships can potentially save our life. Um, Elisha helped Elijah conquer his enemies. Elijah helped Elisha um, by mentoring him, by teaching him, by passing on his mantle to him. Um, again, Boaz helped Ruth. Boaz helped Ruth and gave her food and a place to work and all of that um, and a safe place to live um, and marriage. Ruth helped Boaz fulfill his purpose and his destiny of becoming the great grandfather of King David and being he she ensured that through um, birthing their child that he became listed in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Um, so that's how that's how covenant relationships are. They help us fulfill destiny and they tend to be mutually beneficial where you're helping each other out. So there, there's a lot of power in um, covenant relationships. And if, you know, that, if that person is your God-ordained ministry partner, a lifelong friend that God is placing in your life or mentor that you're is going to help you fulfill your purpose or if that's your spouse god ordained spouse you don't want to be you know holding back from or saying no to the god ordained thing in your life because when we are saying yes to um, those god ordained covenant relationships in our life it's going to um, just bring tremendous blessing in our life and also help us in fulfilling our purpose. So we've talked about a lot today, my friend, but I pray that this has blessed you. Um, and I pray for you. I pray that God would bless you with greater discernment, um, that as a child of God, as these different opportunities, people, um, relationships, commitments are placed in your life that you would seek the Lord and that you would have clear direction, that he would make it clear. It may not be, it may not always be clear right at first, but that as you seek him, he's going to show you what you need to know um, about entering into relationships and who to enter into a relationship with um, and who and what to avoid, what to give your agreement to and what to hold back from. And that the God-ordained relationships in your life that you would be able to just give yourself wholeheartedly to. Think about Elisha and Elijah. Elijah, Elisha gave himself wholeheartedly, his life, his entire life to Elijah because it was a God-ordained relationship. Um, it was a covenant relationship, um, a committed relationship lifelong relationship. So I pray that the Lord would bless you with those type of relationships and discernment to know um, what is and what isn't from him. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.